Welcome to Season Chasers. I'm Rob Freeman. Those that love nature and outdoor sports spend a lot of quality time looking for adventure throughout the year. The more you study, the more you learn about the peak seasons in nature. It's fun to know when it's best to go fishing or hunting, when it's time to pick blueberries, wild mushrooms, or native pecans. Sometimes the peak season is close to home, right in your own backyard, or it could be miles away near the mountains and the sea. Either way, this program will chase the seasons where the action is hot. Today we're chasing the silver salmon in Alaska's Chuitna River. And uh, kind of the significance, uh, in addition to salmon for this river, is it's, a, it's an area that's really threatened uh, by a coal mine that uh, the company wants to build up in the valley that feeds this river. And uh, that's something that's never been done in Alaska before. The uh, state officials have never allowed mining uh, through an existing salmon stream. And uh, that's the big controversy that's going on here. I've been fishing this river for over 15 years, and it's one of my favorite places to go. But right behind me, you'll see the reason why somebody wants to mine coal. There's big loaves of coal through this valley, and uh, it's not particularly uh, a high quality type of coal. This is. Uh, you know, shale and coal goes, I'm told, that uh, you know, the more pure it is, uh, the better uh, it is for heating and this sort of thing. This is a low grade of coal that uh, really isn't good for uh, burning in any of the regulations throughout the United States. The company that has plans to mine the coal wants to put it on big deep draft ships and sell it to countries over in Asia. But um, there's a lot of us here that wonder uh, if it's uh, not legal or uh, sensible to burn this coal in America. Why would it be sensible to burn it in Asia or anywhere else? But uh, anyhow, our interest in this is uh, to really uh, preserve and uh, protect uh, salmon streams because salmon is a renewable resource and certainly coal is not. And if they go digging three to four hundred feet uh, down into uh, uh, extract coal like this in salmon producing areas, it's uh, really no way that it can be put back uh, into the natural way that uh, supports salmon now. So we want to protect this stream, we want to keep it the way it is and uh, enjoy it today and share it with you. We've been studying, we've been learning, and it's time to share today on Season Chasers. Silver Salmon at Alaska's Chewitna River. Don't trip on that coal. Woo -woo! It's silver season up here in Alaska. And this one will get us started. <laughs> I didn't like this sand a bit. What these? Want one of these? All right, you want them? Okay. All right, let's bring them on home. Let's see you later. All right, here's our first silver of the morning. This one hit a number five MEPS. And uh, we're up here in one of these resting pools, and uh, the river's just coming down after uh, several days of uh, rain. But uh, the silvers are still in here in pretty good numbers, we believe. And uh, we'll do our best to mud wrestle this one to get our lure back. And uh, maybe catch another one. Limit's three over here. And uh, there's four of us today, so we're going to try to get a dozen fish on the stringer. And, uh, oh, I keep him from spanking me. But uh, we'll get a gill pulled on this one, get it on the stringer get it bled out in the water, and get it ready to go back to Anchorage. But uh, this is our Lake Clark Monster crew today, and uh, we're going to see what kind of silver monsters we can bring home today from this river, today on Season Chasers. Thanks for coming along. Your turn, Lee. I think I better go get the stringer and the beater. There's more in here. 
found some silvers in the back part of this pool on a spinner bait and uh, we're going to try our best to get this one up on the bank if it's a good one. Dancing silvers. They get particularly nervous when they see a something else on the stringer. <laughs> Sister. Pretty good. Oh yeah. There's another good one. Oh he can keep it. Here you go. Where's that one going? Where's that one going? Straight to the grill. Keeping everything there? Got this one. You might want to let him go. Yeah, then. I'm gonna. And uh, we're being kind of picky today on the ones that we take home. And this is still gonna be a good spawner, but uh, one we want to keep in the water. And uh, you can see it's looks to me like it's gone through a set net. Look at his tail. Man. Yeah, he's got uh, some pretty good marks on him from that. But uh, we're gonna let this one go. Survivor. we get this one released. Go the other way, buddy. There it goes. But uh, still going to be a good spawner, but it's not one that we want for the dinner table. And uh, besides, Johnny wants to catch another one anyway, right? Hell yeah. When I take others out on an Alaska fishing adventure, I like to pick a spot where there are no other people. We want to keep this a natural area. Most folks around here are not against mining, just against mining through salmon streams. You get fishing. Four. Five, threw one back. Lost one. Nice looking fish. This is a selected harvest. You can only find these fresh silver salmon in the Chuitna River during the month of August. After that, the adults lay their eggs and expire. Then the offspring spend up to two winters in the Chewit, making it a year-round salmon nursery. Pretty 
fresh one. And a big one. The kind we like to take to Anchorage. <laughs> I'm done for the day. There we go. Another day of action on Alaska's Chewitna River. Coming up next on Season Chasers. Blue Ribbon Farm and Home has nature's best fall decoration. Blue Ribbon Farm and Home has what you need to feed and care for the wild birds. Blue Ribbon Farm and Home sells supplies to attract trophy white-tailed deer. And don't forget Blue Ribbon Farm and Home has a huge selection of food for dogs. Whether you have a lap dog, a sport dog, chickens, or a goofy goat, Blue Ribbon Farm and Home has all the feeds you'll ever need. You talk about a goofy goat, and this is the goofy goat right here. Next, we run down to the airport to meet a plane, bringing in our fresh supplies. More outdoor fun for you, coming up next on Season Chasers. Extreme environments can cause a spontaneous change in DNA, resulting in unexpected power and agility. Introducing the all-new, all-powerful Gator RSX 850i. 62 horsepower, a fully independent multi-link suspension, and a top speed of 53 miles per hour. It's a whole new species of gator. What are you doing there, Russell? Good. Did I get the skunk off you already? Getting the skunk off already. Hey, keeper? Well, yeah. <laughs> Once they get up on the sand, they're keepers. That's a nice one. Good start. You know that what this means? We're gonna have to make some more room in the freezer. Yeah. All right. Nice. Well, you got one on the stringer, and Johnny hadn't even cleared the hill yet. <laughs> What's up with that? It was his day yesterday. We're going to try to get this one in. He's using every bit of that current today. I got the drag set pretty light. And we'll kind of work him in. I like to lean back and then reel down to it. And if it takes a run, we'll let him run. This is a big male. Wow. <laughs> 
<laughs> he didn't like getting this close to the camera. Meanwhile, back at the river. <laughs> Just a little rosy, what do you think? Like the size of that one, Johnny? Oh yeah. Alright, we'll go ahead and She's see. She's a hog. And I think that'll about do it. <sighs> Pull a gill, bleed them out in the river. And this is most certainly a male. And here's how you tell. See the big hook nose on it? That's one of the stages they go through just before breeding. And uh, this is one of the breeding streams that we really want to protect here and uh, create an environment that uh, these can renew themselves each year and come back and create more. But uh, this one's going to Anchorage, going into the vacuum sealer and freezer it's going to be a good meal later on thanks for coming along today silver salmon fishing on season chasers okay we're relocating on this river and uh, Johnny's already seen a bear <laughs> show me at the truck <laughs> but uh, the reason the bears are down here at the river some of the same reason for us the fish and the berries and uh, Johnny's found some berries around here. We like natural foods, and uh, here's a pretty good example of them. What do you got, Johnny? Oh, just some fresh raspberries right along this little, looks like an animal trail right on the side of this creek here. Surprised there's any left. But um, always keep your eyes open for, for stuff like this, especially when you're out here walking all day. They're pretty hungry. Wild raspberries now. Some of them uh, aren't quite ripe yet, but a bunch of them are, and uh, what do you think about the taste of that stuff? About as good as it gets. Right there. And give it a proper chewing. <laughs> Pretty good stuff. Good to go. Well, that's what the bears like too, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and enjoy a couple of these and uh, work our way back down the river and uh, get back to the fish. But in the meantime, enjoying a few wild raspberries here in Alaska is a pretty good way to uh, keep you going throughout the day and keeps the bears going too. Oh, yeah. and if any bears show up that uh, really need to go home with us, uh, Johnny's ready, right? Always. But you passed on that other bear that uh, came up by the truck. Yeah, and just wasn't the right size. I mean, I'm looking for something. To looking for something worth hanging for sure but I heard it snap we got the shotgun and and loaded one up and got ready but he pretty much uh, pretty much snuck right up on me about 20 feet behind me jumped out of the bushes and I had enough time to decide whether or not to shoot him and pull out my camera for a couple shots so it was pretty cool pretty exciting and that was close enough and then he went the other way huh yeah <laughs> oh, yeah all right well you let him pass and uh, but we got to these raspberries before he did, looks like, and uh, we'll enjoy a few more and uh, keep you posted on the fishing progress here in Alaska. In addition to the black bear that met Johnny at the truck, we noticed this one on the other side of the river one day. Most black bears retreat out here when people are around, and this one was a good bear. Have you ever had a fishing day when you spend lots of time with your lure hung up in the trees? Well, it's a common occurrence at the Chew It. But we find places to get across in an effort to get our lures back. Now this is the snaggy old part of this river. 
And uh, once you get caught in the trees, the only thing you can do sometimes is go after it. And uh, while Russell's trying to pull one out, Johnny's going, going after one of his. Now, I know for a fact that their mother doesn't like for them to climb around on wood piles like this. But you know what? She isn't here today. So I think these guys are going after their lures. Sometimes you go way out on a limb. And sometimes it even works. We get to walk through some incredible displays of nature out here. The Chewett supports runs of five varieties of wild salmon. That means that all the conditions currently exist to sustain the population. Mine wastewater from the swampy mining area up above here would certainly end up in the Chewitna River. That couldn't possibly be good for the wild salmon. We've got two nice ones out of this pool so far and I've been throwing lures and uh, kind of slowed down. So uh, we're going to try to harvest some eggs out of this one what we think is a female and go ahead and do a little fishing with fresh eggs. Oh yeah, this is a female. Most of the body cavity at this point of their life cycle has gone to reproduction. About 80% of this area in here is eggs. And we're going to switch over to a small red hook and maybe use a bobber and we're going to float it through this pool where we know there are fish and see if we can't trigger a strike on these salmon eggs. Uh, that's really the only thing, uh, food source there is to sustain them in here at this time is other fish's eggs. Uh, there's not a big bunch of bait fish or anything in here for the salmon to eat so they show up pretty much with their lunch pack and uh, live off their reserves until they uh, complete their spawning mission. This one hadn't spawned yet, been here a short time, it's going to make some uh, good fillets for the, uh, for the grill and in the meantime we're going to rig up these eggs and uh, see if we can't trade that in for a full-size salmon and yeah, that's a good deal if you ask me. That's how we do it here on Season Chasers. Thanks for coming along. Switched over to eggs here. It's meat day, but still, it's in a very big one. What do you think, Russell? I don't know. Yeah, you put it on. Keep it? Is it a female? It's a male. So keep it if it's a male. We went the hook. Keep them on by it. All right. All right. There's a couple limits there. Good job. All right. Last one you caught's nice. Best one I've ever had on. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get them prepared to uh, take back to the cabin and do the final prep before they go into the freezer. But uh, these are some really nice silver salmon uh, here from the Chewitna River. We're on the west side of Cook Inlet. And we're going to dress these out on a big chunk of flaky coal. And uh, that's one thing that this river is known for is uh, having deposits of fairly low quality coal and uh, there's a company that wants to build a supersized coal strip mine up in the valley that feeds this river. And some of us that catch fish like this are concerned about it because of uh, you know some of the mining accidents that have occurred in the past and uh, never been happened uh, in the past of Alaska history where uh, Coal mining has been allowed in salmon streams, so uh, we hope that's not allowed to occur here because here's some of the, the great salmon that are coming out of here, and uh, we're going to give you the demonstration here of how we lay these out, try to leave as little as possible on the backbone, 
and uh, we'll go ahead and clean them up and trim them up back at the cabin like I said but uh, here's the basic way I like to do it there's a lot of different ways to fillet salmon and I'm going to show you the one that normally works for me a little downward pressure along the backbone here and try to get it all and there's the fillet we end up with this one's a male and later on we're going to need to uh, trim this uh, rib bone out of here section but that gives us a nice silver salmon fillet very little left on the bone but here's what we end up with pretty small bit of meat on this backbone uh, we're not going to be eating the heads today although some people do up here throw that into the moving water safe disposal away from people and uh, nature will clean up the rest all right we got all the fish clean we're going to get our packs all uh, straightened up and uh, head up the hill and head back and have a little lunch at the cabin but uh, it's been a good cloudy morning here and that seems to be when the uh, fishing is the best out here if you have some of these clear streams with uh, real bright sunshine on them uh, the fish in there don't seem to strike as far I guess uh, the sun in their eyes uh, affects them just as well as it would be us but uh, anyway we've had a cloudy day and uh, we've uh, uh, selected six nice silver salmon to take home and uh, like, like I said that's a dozen uh, fillets and we're gonna go home and uh, clean those up and trim the rib bones out of them get them vacuum sealed and in the freezer and uh, headed with the boys back to Anchorage that's how we do it and here we are with Russell's favorite fillet this is the last one he's been cleaning them off in the river and we've got a pretty good little old garbage bag going of them here and uh, this is what we ended up today with six silver salmon that gives us 12 nice fillets and uh, we've got a special method of packing these up the hill today Tune in each week for some of the stuff you just won't see on other shows. Outdoors, wildlife, and a life of adventure. Being on the lookout for natural foods and making the most of what the wildlife provides. Study, learn, and share the great outdoors with someone who's important to you.